Backyard Machine Shop. Today we're going to talk about how we're, I'm going to power a Pratt & Whitney lathe and discuss a couple of the op options I had and uh, go over why I decided to do it the way I did. So, let me get the camera set up, come right back, and um, I'll give you an overview. Alright guys, so what we have here, we have the uh, drive setup that was on the Pratt & Whitney when I purchased it. It, um, and I'll, I'll stick a picture of it. I don't have, have already taken it apart and started looking at how it was built. But um, basically, it consisted of two, two rods. This is what held the whole assembly up. We have a counter shaft and a Lima electric motor with a four speed transmission. So, when I started rebuilding this thing, I was really wanting to um, put a line shaft in the shop. And I still may eventually, but right now, just to get this one running, we're going to use this setup that was already on it, and it was already made for it. Now, the Lima drive is really nice. It's, like I said, it's four speeds. The ratios, the ratios on it are uh, 4.15, 3.15, 1.85, and 1 to 1. So, I started doing some calculations and tried to figure out what my speed options were. And when I realized, at first I thought that you would have to run this in the lowest speed and, and set your belt in one place and then just use your shifter or whatever to, to move it around. But, I started doing some calculations on the drive and the ratios, combining them all with the back gear. Using this Lima drive is going to give me, I think it's 32 speeds. And one of the speeds aren't going to be useful because it's going to be too fast, but it, it's there. So if you stand by, I'll take you over to the chalkboard and kind of give you an idea of what, what we're doing. So okay guys, so I got you over here on the chalkboard. What we're looking at here is um, the speed for the Pratt Whitney lathe with the Lima drive. Now, if I set up a line shaft, I'd only had eight speeds. That would have been the uh, back gear and the, and the uh, high gear and the four uh, pulley sizes. So what we have here, here's our four pulley sizes. So we have position one, position two, position three, and position four. Uh, and then we have our four speeds for our Lima uh, drive system and then we have our this would be our RPMs in each one of those positions so the lowest RPM we have here is going to be six RPM and that's in back gear and, and position one on the belts and load gear on the drive our highest speed is 1019 which is about twice as fast as I care to run the uh, the, the Babbitt bearings in that lathe. It may be okay but but prefer not to. So if you eliminate this one okay and then you can use that that gear and back gear if you need to in that position. So your high speed is going to be 588 and your low speed will be 6. And it ranges in here, um, it's, it, it's pretty dialed in. I thought about putting a VFD on it originally, maybe I can control the speed a little bit, but I think we'll be all right with that. So that's, this is the main reason that I decided to use the Lima drive and the old, the old setup. This is kind of what put it over the edge. All right, guys, so um, kind of explained why I chose this. And, Another factor was the shop here on built on two or four trusts. Um, I'd have to re, um, so I'd have to add support probably to the to the uh, to the ceiling, and um, I'm sure I could do it. It wouldn't be a problem. But for now, I want to get this machine up and running, and this is the how I'm going to do it. So what I want to talk to you a little bit more about today, we're going to take the Lima drive completely out of the picture today, and we're going to go over the counter shaft and the mounting of the, the countershaft. And we're going to take I mean, these bearings, these countershafts on bearings, and 
I want to investigate them a little bit more. I haven't opened them up yet, so I want to do that on camera. And um, we're going to do, we're going to go through the Lima Drive, and we're going to make a series of videos on the Lima Drive. So right now, I'm going to take it off the table, and we're going to uh, concentrate on these bearings and and kind of show you where everything goes on the uh, on the lathe. All right, guys. So we're back over here, and I've taken the Lima Drive and I've put it on a little cart. And so what we're left with, we're left with the counter shift, uh, the drive pulley, and the mounting arms. Now these mounting arms, I'll talk to you a little bit about that. These are well machined arms, and they're you know somebody machined these after they bought the lathe to put them on, and, and basically they're machined out of some two inch or two and a half inch uh, steel. I hadn't measured it. Um, some inch in. I have measured this, and I think it's um, inch and sixteenth or something like that. And it's a mounting place for the bearings. And if you, I'll take you down. This here, this actually mounts to to the lathe. And uh, it mounts into the casting right here, and then it's supported. So it's a well, it's a well thought out design. It's got a couple set screws in here that that maintain its alignment. It, it tightens up on it and it slide. I'm pretty sure this slides in place. I haven't taken it apart, so I don't know yet. Um, and then you have a, a counter shaft mount. And it's basically the same thing. It looks like it's um, it's got a collar that is positioned, probably goes into into the shaft itself, and then it's got a a, uh, a boss and a platform for the bearing. And then this mount up here, um, make sure you can still see that. Okay, this mount up here, it actually receives the stiffeners for the, there's a plate sits on the top here, it's fit in some bosses. And this is how it's all stiffened and, and um, supported with bracketry. So, pretty good design. We're gonna pull it completely apart, clean it up and paint it. Um, we may have to modify this bracket if the bearings can't be fixed. Okay, so now we have the counter shaft. And on this counter shaft you have a 16 inch uh, shift with a split bushing, uh, tapered bushing. That's pretty simple stuff. Then we have two pillow block bearings and um, on each end and then you have the counter shaft in the middle. Uh, the shafting is all 11 or inch and 11 sixteenths um, and then the bearings are, I've never really worked on anything with bearings like this so we're going to pull this bearing apart. I haven't, haven't even looked at it but I can tell you this, it doesn't sound great. Now, I'm assuming these are self-aligning bearings because of the, the motion in them. If they're not, this bearing's in really bad shape. So, let me stop the cameras and go get some tools and we're going to pull this end cap off and we'll check out this bearing and see what we have to do. Now, one of the things that I have noticed about this lathe is whoever built, put all this together, really did a good job. Um, a lot of the bolts, when they come apart, they got never seize on them or oil or something where they were put together, and um, they come right apart. Now, these aren't, these don't have the oil on them like the other ones did, but again, things just come, it comes apart pretty decent. And I think I'm taking these apart correctly. I mean, we'll find out in a second. I haven't been able to locate any bearings that look like this. So if someone wants to chime in what they're called or anything. All right, so we're taking the cap off. And look at that. Somebody shot some grease in there at one point and just kind of got right there. Didn't even make it to the bearing. Okay, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at the bearing. It looks like it's got a... Uh, a um, nut that holds it together. Okay, so let me go get a little punch and a little hammer and we'll take that nut off. Here is I got a little punch and uh, we're going to try to remove this 
spanner nut. Alright guys, so what we're doing now is um, I've got a bearing splitter set up and we're going to try to pull this bearing off. Now, looking at this bearing, it's going to be a special bearing and I'm hoping I can save it. So I'm trying to pull the whole thing off at one time. We'll see how it goes. There it goes, it broke. Alright, I'm going to put some lubricant on here. Now this is basically a 50-50 mixture of ATF and, and um, acetone. And it works good for stuff like this. Break loose, I guess. All right. So let's take and clean it up. It's definitely seen its better days. I think we wind up having to replace it. It's gotten hot. It's gotten hot enough that it's melted stuff to the shaft. All right. So there's their bearing. Um, I'm going to clean it up. I'll come back and we'll discuss what's got to happen. Alright guys, so we've got the bearing off, cleaned it up, uh, I'm put a little light on it, it sounds good. We're going to do a little forensics work. So, first of all, bearing's a, a 50 by 90 by 20. So, you need to cross reference that and um, see if I can find a replacement. So like I said, I, I took it apart, I cleaned it real good, and some, here's some uh, mineral spirits. And you can see the dirt that came out of it. And uh, put a little light oil on it, it turns free. All right, here's the, uh, this is a, a tapered bushing that rides in here, and it pulls up and it tightens up on the shaft as it's pulling in. Okay, so it slides up on the shaft like so. All right, now let me, here's what the bearing would kind of look like. See all this dried up grease? And this right here was where this slot was. Anyway, grease that, in there, that was in there had dried. It had dried inside the bearing also, but it, it came right up. And like I said, it sounds real good. But let's do a little forensics work. When this thing was put together, you had the back portion of the uh, of the bearing, and you got the front portion. Now, um, if you look, remember I showed you earlier in the video, someone greased it. There's the grease where they 
greased it one time. Look how far it went. It never, all this has never seen grease, including the back. Okay, so that's telling me that this bearing spent its whole life, and whatever use it got, it spent with the grease it was packed with, um, which was fine. Most bearings, when they packed, they last 20 years. So, but it also tells me another thing since this bearing sounds pretty good. Don't smell burnt. It's telling me that again, this whole setup was never used much. So, just for the, just for, for my sake and, and my mental uh, well-being, I'm gonna order a set of bearings. They shouldn't be hard to find. If if this would been full of grease or something like that and it just dried up from sitting. I probably would have tried to use these bearings, but since it never had any grease, that's telling me it's ran its whole life with what little bit of grease it had in it. And I'd just rather order the bearings. They're probably 40 or 50 bucks a piece. Okay, so there you have it. We got one side apart. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna take apart the other side and get the other bearing out. And, uh, and Make sure it's the same size bearing to start with, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Anyway, we're going to take it apart and uh, get the bearings ordered, clean everything up, polish up the, the counter shaft, uh, clean up and paint the pulley here, the shift, and, uh, and put it back together. So I'm going to do that off camera. Uh, there's no sense in, in putting all that through, you know, watching it. And, uh, We'll come back and we're going to do the same thing to the drive unit. We're going to take it apart, we're going to check it out, and we're going to replace the bearings. I know i got to do a little work to it. There was a pipe, a drain pipe that drained the crankcase or the case, and it's broke off. So we got to take the pipe out, and the inside's wet, so I'm assuming it's going to be good. We'll check the bearings, pull the motor off, clean it up, check the bearing on the end of the motor, and make sure it's good, and kind of give you an idea how these transmissions were made. So stay tuned for that. Um, I know it's been a while since I've made a video. I've uh, been really busy in the shop. I've had a lot of work going on between here and some personal things going on and, and at work. And um, I hope to get out here more often. I started moving things around. I don't know. I'll catch y'all up on that too. So anyway, uh, to all my subscribers out there, thank you. To all my commenters out there, thank you. And to, all my, to everyone that hits the like button, thank you. Um, and then everyone else that watches, thank you also. So, from the backyard machine shop, so long.